Okay, so let's practice a little bit taking a Newman projection, right, and turning this into a wedge and hatch line bond type drawing. So what I first thing I'll always do, you can label it. I'm gonna call this carbon one, even if it might not be carbon one for the nomenclature. I'm just gonna say this is carbon one up front. I'm looking at carbon one, and carbon one is going back to carbon two, even if it's not really carbon. I mean, we could call it carbon alpha bonding to carbon beta, but whatever. It's bonded to one. Actually, we're going to do that. Alpha and the beta. I'm going to change it. Maybe. Alpha is bonded to beta going back, right? So this big one is beta, right? Everybody understands that this big circle represents the carbon that's bonded to alpha. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line. And for my case, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look down here, and I'm going to turn to my right. You can certainly turn to your left, too, but I'm just going to do it to turn to my right. So I would say that H and F are like my right hand. My head is H. This ethyl is also at my head. And the OH and the CL are my left hand. I'm going to turn to my right, which means the alpha carbon would be there. The beta carbon would be there. When I turn to my right, the H is on the front. As I turn to the right, the H is now on my right hand. It's also going to be sticking out at you. So the H here will be wedged, which means the chlorine on my left hand would be hatched. And the H here is even with my head, so when I turn, my head is still in the plane, so this would be where the H is at. Now at this point, you can actually you can stop even messing with the, like messing around, like turning your body and stuff. You could just say, wait, well, the H and the F are both on the same side. And if I divide the Newman projection in half, the H and the F are both on the same side. So that means if the H is wedged, the fluorine must be wedged too, right? And also, there's another way to think about it. Um, are the H and the fluorine eclipsed right now, or are they staggered? They're, right, so they're, they're like on top of each other, right? If they're both wedged, they'd both be like on top of each other, right? Lined up. What about the H? What's eclipsed with the H right now? This ethyl piece, right? The two carbon piece here. So where should that go? Up on top. That should go up on top right here, right? To see, to signify that the H and the ethyl are both eclipsed, right? It's showing them being eclipsed. What about the OH? Where's that going? That's on the same side as the chlorine. So that should be hatched. It should be right there. Tough part will be people will get screwed up with this. All right, this is an ethyl piece. So let's label it something uh, alpha, beta, you know, delta, and then gamma, I think is this thing. Right? There's gamma, there's delta. Right? Don't lose carbons when you do these neural projections. Whether you the thing that people most time will do is they'll lose carbons. Whether they when they're from here to here or vice versa. Don't lose carbons. So label all your carbons. Don't need to use the Greek letters. You could use one, two, three, four. Okay. Right, but that's a different numbering than nomenclature. So just you gotta be able to de detach that from the nomenclature numbering sometimes. Right? So don't lose your carbons. All right, we got a very uh, interesting gold structure here. Uh, so another Newman projection. We're going to take, again, take this Newman projection. And now it's a staggered Newman projection and to convert this to a wedge and hatch line bond drawing. So again, I'm just going to maybe do it a little easier now. I'm going to say this is carbon one that I'm looking at. And the big circle here, I'm going to call that carbon two. Now I'm not going to try to lose anything, so I'm going to call that A, B, C, then D, and E, all right? So I number my carbons or letter them or however you want to do it, all right? Find your own best way to do it. So now to take this, I'm going to, let's shrink this just a little bit. The first thing I do is I draw a bond, all right? So if I'm looking at this and I turn to my right, carbon one is right here. So let's label that carbon one. This would be carbon two. 
Now we got to think about what's on carbon one and where is it at in three dimensional space. So here, when I look at this, if I have my hands kind of raised now above my head, the thing to my right is what? Gold. Nope, gold is actually to my left. Gold would be to my left, right? And so now when I turn to the right, gold would be coming at you or going away from you then? It'd be going away from you. Right? So I gotta, so we're ask, we're, you guys are here, right? I turn this way, oh. right? gold would be going away. So as I turn to the right, the gold would be going away from me and it would be kind of on the top part now and hatched. So it would be up here. Now what would be its wedge counterpart going to be? What's kind of up and to the right now? Propyl. Propyl, that ABC thing. Propyl, right? A, B, C. So there's the wedge and the hatch, but what's in the plane? What's my feet? Where's that my feet now? Instead of my head before we did it, we had something in my head. Now at my feet is what? Chlorine. Chlorine. Right? So this is different because now this is a staggered, not a eclipse confirmation. So it's a little different. So now let's go to carbon two. What's on carbon two? There's an OH, a PH2, and a ethyl. So we got to make sure we have all those things. So what's exactly like 180 degrees away from the chlorine. Maybe this is an easy way to start off. The OH. So the OH would be wedged, hashed, or straight? Straight. Straight. And it would be not, it wouldn't be down here. It would be up here, right? To show it's 180 degrees away. So that would be the OH. Good. Now, I mean, you can still also, again, here, make your life easier. You could divide this Newman projection in half, right? Kind of divide it in half. So if you had your propyl, the ABC part, is on the right-hand side and it's wedged, the ethyl is also on that same side, right? So it also should be wedged. But it's going to be on this bottom side now. D and E. Again, you'll notice if you split this in half, the gold and the pH2 are on the same side. If we decide that gold is on this side, then the pH2 must also be hatched. So the biggest key here, the tough part here, is to recognize, right, so this is a little different, right? All of a sudden it's 180 degrees, things are not, maybe this is probably harder than the eclipse one, I think, right? <coughs> Split it in half, the OH and the CL are opposite each other. These two things are on the same side, so they both need to be wedged. These two are on the same side, they both need to be hatched. But notice the wedge and hatches are on the same side of the ring, on the same side of the, the bond here, because it's staggered now. If it's staggered, Right? These have to be opposite, and the wedges and hatches have to be ones in the top, ones in the bottom. All right. All right, so in this one, let's just take a look at just the basic, how do I know if something's staggered, how do I know if something's eclipsed? So the way to know that is, to, from, a, from a line bond structure, to look at this and say, well, the wedge, so if you look at this as like the, the bond you're looking down, right? If this is the bond your eyeball is looking down, about this bond, these things are both on the same side, so they must be eclipsed. Right? The wedges are, you know, if you looked at this, they have to be over top of each other. Now, if you did the same thing over here and look down this bond, you would see, well, I see this bond sticking up, but then there's nothing here. Right? It's on the bottom part. So this is a staggered conformation. Sometimes you'll see it as a zigzag. Okay. Right? Whereas this is more like a U. Yep. So that's a way to recognize staggered versus eclipse from the wedge and hatch line bond structures. All right, so let's take some examples and I'll put some substituents on these. Let's look at the staggered one, or this eclipsed one first. So the first thing I'd want to be able to do, can you draw the correct Newman projection to start out with for this? So if you look at this, my ball is here. If we call this carbon one, this carbon two. Carbon one has something at my head or at my feet. Carbon one, if I'm, my eyeball's looking this way and I'm standing here, is carbon one have something in my head or my feet? Feet. So that means I draw something down. And the other two things must be going up, right? What about carbon two? Does carbon two have something in my head or at my feet? No. 
feet. feet. All right, and the other two things are there. All right. Once you kind of figure the first one out, then it has to be eclipsed, so it has to be exactly the same way, right? So carbon one, carbon two is here. So what's at my feet? It's a CH3, so I don't need to draw anything there on carbon one. All right, that's a CH3. Up and to the right is what? That's a H. H, so that goes here. Up and to the left would be an OH. So what's on the same side as the OH? The, the H. The H. What's on the same side as the other H on carbon one? Bromine. Bromine. And what's eclipsed with the methyl group right here? Another methyl group, right? So we just make sure that's there. Oops. Can we write CH3 in? You certainly can write CH3 in. Absolutely. So let's say you transfer that to a Newman projection. All right, again, so let's turn this other one into a Newman projection. Draw a circle first, that's the first step. So now we look at this and we hopefully recognize that this is staggered, right? This is a staggered conformation, but the question is, is the first thing on carbon, right? We'll call it carbon one and carbon two. Is the first thing on carbon one at my head or at my feet? Head. So I'm gonna draw it this way. And I know it's staggered, but I also could check the thing at carbon two, is that at my head or my feet? Carbon two has something at my head or my feet? Feet. Very good. What's at my head at carbon one? This is one and the big one's two. What's at my head at carbon one? The hydroxide, the OH, very good. What's to my right or bottom to my right? The H is coming out. And then away from me is a methyl, so I'll even call it a CH3 this time. Why not? What's on carbon two? What's at my feet at carbon two? H. What's up into my right at carbon two on the same size as the other H? Bromine. And then the other side has an OH. All right, once you kind of start getting these, you kind of start getting. But it takes practice. Practice, practice, practice. So would this one be 